Hello and welcome back to our Modest Designs. Today we're going to be doing a review on this Rostock Max V2 3D printer. Let's get started. Just as a quick upfront note, this printer was sent to me by the company CME CNC, which is its manufacturer, because they are sponsoring my current prosthetic hand project, which I'll be doing a video on very shortly. This printer was sent to me for free as sponsorship for that project and in return for a open and honest review on it, but this video contains thoughts that are completely my own and is not paid for in any way. So first things first, this is a delta style 3D printer which means it uses a vertical X, Y, and Z axis as opposed to a more traditional X, Y, and Z axis layout that the standard Cartesian printers use, which has a couple advantages and disadvantages that I'll go over in my opinion about the printer. This printer comes as a kit, meaning it's completely unassembled and you build all of it yourself. The build area, since this is a delta style printer, is not measured by a cube, it's measured by a cylinder, and it's 10.5 inches in diameter and 14.5 inches in height, which is enormous for a desktop style printer. The whole printer itself, when fully assembled with a spool holder on top, which actually doesn't even fit in the frame of this shot, is just over a meter tall, so it does take up quite a bit of desk space. The extruder setup is a Bowden system, meaning its drive gear is mounted to the top plate and it has a tube that the filament runs through down to the hot end and that uses 1.75 millimeter filament. It also has a heated build surface with a removable glass plate. It also has an LCD display, which means you can um, put SD cards into the side and use it untethered, meaning it doesn't have to be plugged into a computer to actually do prints or use the included USB to plug into your computer and print tethered. And the kicker is, this entire package is $999. Now I know, $1,000 is quite a lot of money, but for a 3D printer, that's very mid-range of the current desktop 3D printers, and this gives you some incredible features for that price, notably the build volume. So now I'm gonna break this review up into three separate parts. We're gonna go over the build, how the printer actually prints, and my opinion of it. So let's start with the build. Since this printer is a kit, what you get when you purchase one is several very large sheets of melamine laser cut panels, which is what's used to assemble the majority of the printer. You also get some acrylic panels, which are here at the front and just around the sides in various places. Some injection molded pieces, notably the delta arms and the ball cup assembly and the cheapskates that run up and down the risers. You also get a plethora of hex nuts and screws in different sizes to fasten everything together. The machine runs on very standard NEMA 17 motors, which drives all the axis and the extruder has a Rambo 1.3 main board, which powers everything an LCD display, as previously talked about, and a included power supply, meaning it's actually inside the unit and it doesn't hang between um, the cord and plugging into the wall like the majority of 3D printers. Notably, the kit does not include any of the tools that you'll need to put it together, of which there are quite a lot, including soldering and some RTV silicone to hold the hot end thermistors and the heated bed thermistor correctly to their respective areas. This kit is really for mechanically inclined people who are comfortable working with their hands and building intricate things and working with a large variety of tools including um, doing stuff like soldering because there's a whole lot of very intricate steps to put this printer together. The website says assembly and calibration will take between 20 and 30 hours and I kind of laughed when I you know, when I read that and I was like, okay, so I'll have this together in 15 hours. I think I probably spent about 35 hours all said and done. So it's, it's quite, I don't want to say it's a challenge, but it's quite tedious. The main material used for this printer, as I said, is melamine, which I'm really not a fan of. It's basically like a hardboard or an MDF that just has a thin plastic coating and it's been laser cut so the edges have all been blackened. 
Um, it's very stiff and it's very dimensionally stable, which is what you want for a 3D printer um, because you're not going to have things flexing while the motors are moving and um, you know moving the carriage around. Because if you had flexing components, that would be really bad. However, it's just not a very durable material. Like you shouldn't get it wet, and granted, you shouldn't get any 3D printer wet. But if it were plastic or metal, um, something else, it would be more resistant to something like that. When you put the hex nuts into the assigned slots, often they don't fit completely right because the parts are laser cut, so they don't have a super, super tight tolerance, and you have to hold those hex nuts with a pair of pliers into place as you made it with the other melamine part and drive a screw through them, and often those hex nuts will turn, even if you're holding them, because a lot of the angles are very awkward, and when they turn, they're stripping into the MDF and eroding it, which is bad. This being said, this is really only a problem when you're putting the printer together, and while it is annoying, once you have all the individual pieces assembled and not moving anymore, it is perfectly stable. I'm sure it'll hold up fine over the years. It's just not something I would have choose to use as the main material. I would have much preferred if the sidewalls were made of a dense plastic like HDPE or if you wanted to go above and beyond even using Delrin which would be quite expensive but much much more durable. One thing I do really like about the design is a lot of the panels are just held on with thumb screws meaning if you ever need to get access to the wiring or uh, perform maintenance you don't actually need any tools to do it. You can simply unscrew them pop off the panel you need, do whatever you need to do, and then pop it back on. Same thing applies to the acrylic side panels. They simply pop out. You can do what you need to do and pop them back on. But it's all designed in such a way that it's actually very, very stable on its own. This machine doesn't have any sort of auto bed leveling and no thumb screws to manually adjust the bed. Everything is done through software and through adjusting the screws at the top of the cheapskates as they um, click with their respective end stops. Calibration is pretty tricky once you set the printer up initially, but once you have it all fine-tuned, you should never need to adjust it. I've never had to adjust mine, and I've been printing on it for uh, three or four months now. Going strong. I did make a couple changes to this printer from stock, notably the hot end. The hot end that CME CNC supplies with this printer is in 3D printing terms, prehistoric. It uses a PET liner, which means you can't um, bring it to above 145 degrees Celsius or else it will soften inside, meaning you can't use any of the high temp plastics. And I print almost exclusively in PETG, which prints at 260 degrees. So to me, this was totally useless. The other thing, um, and I know a lot of people just print in PLA or just use a low temp ABS and think, you know, 245 degrees is totally fine, which I would agree with. However, this uses two heater cartridges that you have to install yourself that are right at the end of the um, heat block, which is where they should be, but they're very, very outdated heater cartridges. And I've seen lots of people on the CME CNC forums have issues with one or both of them blowing out during longer prints, so I didn't even bother with this garbage. The other thing that I did is add a plate to um, beneath the glass but above the heated plate um, for the bed because glass does a really poor job at evenly um, dispersing heat and the heated build platform is not even all the way through. So the aluminum um, helps to disperse heat evenly so you see very little temperature drop from the center of the bed all the way out to the edges. When I installed the new all metal hot end, I also took it as an opportunity to print a new center carriage, which has uh, three different slots for cooling fans. So those cooling fans go down through the vents and cool whatever you're printing from all angles. And the last thing that I've replaced on this printer is the Rambo board that actually runs it. Now this is not a product that CME CNC makes specifically for this printer, it's actually one of the uh, higher end, more premium boards that runs a lot of the different higher end 3D printers, such as the Lulzbot series, and I believe also Ultimakers. Um, so this, these issues were not at all of CME CNC's fault, and they solved them very quickly, but I'll run through them for you. 
the first board that I was given, the LCD screen did not sync correctly, I guess would be how you would describe it. I could not use the SD card reader and my temperature readings were all over the place. So I got in contact with support and explained the problem and they said, okay, well, sounds like an LCD unit issue, so we'll send you a new one, and they did, and that didn't work. Um, so what they did is had me send the board back. They figured out, yes, it's a board problem and it's not something they can fix on hand. So they sent me a new one for free, and that was great. Um, that's exactly how customer support should work, and I can say that CMEC's customer support is excellent. Top marks. So the big question is, how does it print? Very, very well, I'm happy to say. There, you have to think of it differently than a smaller printer or a Cartesian printer because this printer has not been geared to do very small, intricate parts like a lot of the uh, smaller Cartesian printers are made for. Its um, XY accuracy is not super, super tight, and because it's a Bowden system, you do get um, more stringing in your parts if you have big um, areas that the hot end has to travel in between uh, while laying down filament or if you're doing multiple prints um, at the same time because it's such a large bed. Um, that being said, it's an extremely fast printer. There's almost no visible difference in quality between um, printing at a slow speed like 50 millimeters a second and going all the way up to 90 or even 100 millimeters a second just because of the way this uh, machine is designed. Deltas are designed to be very, very fast and they're just as accurate at anywhere in that speed in my experience. I'm normally printing at 200 millimeter layer heights, um, sorry, 200 micron layer heights, although it can go all the way down to 100 or all the way up to 400. 200 is normally just about right for the prints that I've been doing with it. One of the other great things about this printer is apart from having the heated bed at the wrong setting, so many hours into a print, a print can start peeling off, I have never had a failed print. Not one. That wasn't, that wasn't my fault specifically because of the heated bed. This is an extremely reliable printer. The way the Bowden um, system feeds, it's direct down from the spool. It doesn't have to loop around anywhere. It's directly into the system, so it always feeds perfectly. I've never had a problem with the motors skipping beats or running into themselves or the print and jogging off course. It is extremely reliable. Because the Delta design requires each motor to move ever so slightly or perhaps a lot, depending on what the print head what action the print head is performing at any given time, everything is constantly readjusting itself as opposed to a Cartesian printer, which if you were just moving it, um, doing a straight line, only one axis has to move at a time. It results in slightly more vibration in the system, which leads to a slightly more visual noisy print. And what I mean by that is your layers are a little bit wavy. They're not totally straight like they would be in a Cartesian printer. If you're printing a long flat surface, you do see more vibration and a little more striation. Now that's not a huge deal, but it is something worth noting. And if you're um, trying to get something that's super, super smooth right out of the gate, this printer doesn't do as good a job as some of the other printers out there. However, for the added speed benefit you get and because of how large you can build parts, I think that's totally fine because this printer, as I said, is really geared towards much larger parts and fast prototypes. It also seems to do curved surfaces much better than straight ones, and it's even doing curved surfaces better than the Cartesian printers that I've tested. Here's one of the things I printed off it a couple days ago. Um, I didn't use any support material, so you do see um, an ugly overhang here, uh, just printed out of PLA, and I didn't wasn't thinking about it when I did it, so that's not perfect, but everything else about it looks pretty good. And you can see there is a little bit of waviness in this hexagon pattern, as well as um, these vertical slots near the bottom of the print. Obviously this is a lightsaber, um, and I've been designing this in CAD because I'm actually going to have one machined. Um, I have a buddy that owns a machine shop, but I want to make sure that it's exactly the shape and feel of what I want it to be before we actually make it out of metal, which is 
perfect for 3D printing. So this is something that I can test very quickly. And to look at some real big parts, this is a project that I did um, last semester for my ergonomics class, and this was to make a handle to redesign the way that um, standing walkers work. So you hold it like this, but that's not important. What's important is this printed just very, very well on the Delta. It was designed in two pieces because it was actually designed to be printed on a smaller printer, but this uh, one giant part could actually be combined and printed as a single piece on the Delta printer. And finally, my opinion of the machine. Is the Rostock Max V2 worth $999? Absolutely. Hands down, completely worth it. Now, that doesn't mean that this is the printer for everybody. This printer really excels at doing medium to large size parts very quickly. That's not to say that it can't do small parts, it certainly can and turn them out quite well, but its best use is for larger things. One thing that I can't stress enough about this printer is the value. Because this printer is offered as a kit and you build it yourself, that cuts down on production costs a lot. So for your $999, you're getting a larger build volume than almost any other 3D desktop printer offers you. A 10 and a half diameter by 14 and a half high build area is enormous for a desktop printer. Apart from my gripes about the melamine sheeting, it is also very well designed, very well built, <laughs> depending on if you've built yours well, and overall it's just a fantastic printer. I'd like to give a huge thank you to See Me CNC again for sending this out to me. I'd like to give a huge thank you to See Me CNC for sending this printer out to me and sponsoring my prosthetic hand project. That really helps me out a lot, and I've really, really enjoyed using it. Thank you to you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Sending this printer out for me and sponsoring. Blah, 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 blah.